Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today we're talking about the Cocos Creator Game Engine. I've talked about this a few times in the past on this channel and today we're talking about it specifically because Cocos Creator 2.3 was just released. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off with a quick hands-on with Cocos Creator so you have an idea of what the hell I'm talking about. If you're interested in learning more, I will link to all of the previous videos and I've even got a tutorial series for getting you up and started with Cocos Creator at least for 2D game development. So without further ado, let us jump in, take a look at Cocos Creator in action and then I'll do a quick rundown of what's new in 2.3 and all the rest of that. So here we are. Uh, this is Cocos Creator. As you can see, it is a full, all-in-one WYSIWYG editor environment for creating games. The focus is definitely on mobile and web games. The language you use are a combination of uh, either JavaScript or TypeScript. Although, um, behind the scenes, it is based on the Cocos 2DX C++ framework, which, by the way, is also still in development. The Cocos history itself is very convoluted. Started off as a Python library, was ported over to Object C, was ported over to uh, C++, and frankly, the Cocos 2DX project ported it to basically every programming language ever invented. And then Cocos Creator is more of a game engine built on top of it. So this is more about the developer experience, having things like animation tools in here, game preview tools, um, so you can actually see your game actually running while you're running with it. You've got a device simulator for how uh, to emulate it running on various different devices. You've got your node graph over here, all your various different game assets over here. And then when you select items in the scene, obviously you have properties and components that you can attach. So it takes that traditional component or composition based model that we were kind of getting also familiar with in the world of game development and adds to it. Now the big thing here is a lot of what we've got going on here are things like this, rigid body 3D, 3D colliders, and and so on. We've moved a lot more into 3D with this particular release. And I've got the project sample open with all of the various different project samples to get you going. And I'll showcase a couple of the new things going on here. So the big one we've got going on here is the new uh, 3D support. So we've got 3D particle support and we've got 3D physics support. I'll show you in physics. So the simple example we've got going on here, um, you can toggle the view mode in between 3D and not 3D. Uh, so when you're in 3D, uh, you can navigate around with the WASD keys. Okay, so I'm not in 3D anymore. Let's go back into 3D. And where's my object? There it is. All right. So we can use the WASD keys to navigate around. Uh, we're quite a ways away from this guy. So, And the weird thing that I've actually found is there's no way to frame select it that I've found as of yet. So there we go. Here is our scene. You'll notice we've got... A generator going on here. This guy is dropping balls into the scene, so it is a 3D collider. Whenever it is hit, it will jump or flash as red. So you see here, it has got a rigid body 3D component on it. We've also got our game world here. These are also, this is a box collider. Uh, this is oh, a text label. I don't know how I ended up hitting that. So here we got the floor going on. It's a collider and a rigid body and so on. So this is some of the new features and functionalities in Cocos Creator 2.3 is this 3D support, specifically 3D physics support. And I can also showcase the simulator over at us. We can have this run in a browser, a creator browser version for you, or you can run it directly in the simulator. We'll go ahead and run this one in the simulator. So we'll go ahead and do a build of our project. You can see the simulator in action. The simulator has the ability to switch between a number of different devices, um, or we can maximize that guy out there. And here you see every time I press the button, it drops new balls into the world. So you can see the collisions are occurring when it flashes red, and then they hit in the world, and you can just kind of keep spamming these things out. Eventually, they start falling off into the nether realms. But that's kind of the idea of what you are working with. With the simulator, you've actually got control over the device that you're simulating, so you can have it come in, have it be... Um, a pixel or um, iPhone or iPad or whatever. So if you want to change those settings there, I guess I should have done this before I close the simulator down. Just click up in the title bar up here, right click, and you'll see you've got various different options. So you can simulate a number of different devices. You can zoom out full screen. So if you're developing for the the gol the Golgil or the Golgi uh, Nexus whatever or or an iPhone it will automatically match the dimensions of that device. You've also got the abilities here. Um, you can build for various different platforms. So you've got support directly in here for uh, having it run out to. Um, your Cocos 2DX directory, NDK, the uh, Android SDK stuff, if you, if you want to do Android builds. You've also got the ability to run directly on hardware devices and so on. As you can see, once again, you've got a world node over here. Everything is composition-based, so if you want to keep adding components to stuff, you can easily do so. Uh, you have animation editors. So I'm not going to get into a whole lot more details about uh, the specifics of this guy. I'm going to focus instead more on what is covered in the 3.0, oh, sorry, the 2.3 release. It's getting dyslexic there. Um, and that was the big things we 
we've got going on once again are the um, the new 3D physics and the new uh, particle effects in 3D. You can see in action here. Ta-da! So, um, yeah, that's a quick preview of Cocos Creator. And once again, if you're interested in learning more about it, I've done a number of videos, so I will link those down below so you can jump in. And once again, as I mentioned earlier on, I do have a tutorial series to get you up and going. But it gives you an idea of what the editor is like. Another thing that was really changed on this guy is they've they upgraded their Dragon Bones support. And that's actually kind of what we started with. Dragon Bones is a way of doing skeletal animations. Uh, we're in 3D mode still. All right, switch back to 2D. It's a way of doing skeletal animations uh, by cutting up a mesh. So you can have the animations work here in um, uh, Cocos Creator without really having to do a lot of work. But you've also now got the ability to do dynamic weapon mounts or dynamic character mounts onto an existing skeleton. So, for example, if you want to have a rider on an animated dinosaur, they have support for that as well. All right, so that is it. That is Coco's Creator, at least a bit of a, pri a primer or a hands-on to it. Now what we're going to do is kind of look at what is in 2.3. So again, if you want to learn more about it, the nice thing that we've got going on here, this is available at, uh, where am I? It's uh, Cocos.com. Uh, so you see here, it's got 2D and 3D support. They say it's open source. The engine is open source, but the editor is not. So there's a distinction there. The underlying rendering technology, Cocos 2D X, is open source. The uh, overlying or the overlaid uh, IDE that we just saw in action is not open source. It is cross-platform, however, we're able to target web, iOS, Android, Mac, and Windows. Uh, you can use JavaScript and the TypeScript language and full UI, uh, custom tools. There's extensibility built in, so there you can easily add extensions on top. So that, in a nutshell, is Cocos Creator. Now we're going to look at what specifically is new in V2.30. Uh, we got support for... Oh... Qtt. We'll go with Qtt uh, mini games. And one of the things you'll find about Cocos Creator is it's most popular in China. Uh, so it's got a lot of supports for things that are more more common or more supported over there, such as Qtt games or WeChat and so on. Um, as we saw earlier, we now have support for 3D physics built in based on the Canon JS library. So we've got things like rigid box, uh, box sphere collisions, components trigger and collision events, uh, physical materials, ray detection, and many other. Uh, we've got support for 3D collision system, provides a lightweight collision detection uh, called built-in. Built-in is a physics module uh, with only a collision detection system compared to other physics engines. It does not have complicated simulation calculations, which can make games package smaller and provide better performance. So if you just need collisions, uh, you can use that for that and have much more lightweight. Again, we've got support now for uh, 3D particle systems being built in. Uh, you've got control over a fine number of details on them, shape, color, velocity, size, sequence, frame, trailing, and so on. And you've got a full curve editor already built in that it takes advantage of. Upgraded the material system, so we now have support for real-time preview of modified results, support material variants and uh, effect variants, making it more friendly to 2D games, support multiple techniques, and support technique pass property names. So uh, an upgrade on the material system there. And as I mentioned earlier on, for if you're going for that dynamic 2D bone kind of animation approach, uh, spine and dragon bones both um, dragon bones both support mount nodes like you see this guy um, is mounted on top of this guy uh, it makes it a lot easier to do things like add weapons to your character that can automatically be swapped out and so on supports spines binary resource format um, only recompile scripts when building uh, scene editor as 3d viewing options um, we've got other improvements and then we get into the smaller engine fixes and so on uh, so yeah, that is basically Coco's Creator 2.30, a fairly substantial release to be honest, move more into that world of 3D functionality. Uh, as I mentioned earlier on, I do have a full tutorial series on this guy, the Coco's Creator Crash Course, available over on uh, Dev Game. I will link that down below along with the video link. So if you want to learn more about Coco's and you want to actually learn how to get started with Coco's, I do have a uh, tutorial series walks you through things like creating sprites, uh, debugging, handling input, sound and music, animation, collision detection, not using the new system. This is a full 2D series in this particular case. Uh, physics, again, 2D physics, not 3D physics. And of course, we've got tile map support. So if you want to create tile maps, you can. Uh, so if you can use something like the tiled map editor and import them in here, you're good to go. And I've also got a video version that covers all that same crap just in video form. So that is it. That is Coco's Creator 2.30. Uh, definite world in, move into the world of 3D with 3D physics, uh, spine upgrades, uh, 3D particle systems, and you name it. So yeah, 
Let me know what you think of Cocos in general. I, again, they're doing really well in Asia, but over here, or this side of the pond anyways, they never seem to have really caught on. And I'm wondering what your opinion of it is. Is there a reason why you're staying away from it? Uh, is it the lack of open sourceness on the editor? Do you care about open sourceness? Uh, I'm interested in hearing you know, why you may or may not choose something like Cocos Creator in the comments down below. That's it. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.